We're asked to find the surface area of the intersection between this cone and the cylinder above the xy plane. So if we were to draw this, it's going to look something like this. Um, let's focus on the cylinder first. And uh, let's try to rearrange this equation a little bit. So we'll go x minus 0 squared. And then over here, we're going to say um, like y squared minus 8y. And then if we want to complete the square, we're going to need a plus 16 and a nine, minus 16 there. So that way we could say y minus 4 squared um, is going to be equal to 16 in the end. I got the equation for a cylinder. You can see that 0, 4 is the center. The radius is going to be 4, and we've got a nice cylinder over here. Now this is going to go all the way up, and it's going to sort of encounter this cone thing, which we're going to assume. Um, we're going to assume that this cone is just this big round thing like this, and that's going up an intersection with with this somehow. Um, so let's try to find the surface area using ds. It's going to be equal to the square root of fx squared plus fy squared plus one, and then we're even going to have the dx dy the end here. Um, let's try to rearrange this equation a little bit because we're going to need to find the fx, fy. So we're going to say that like it would be z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. And that is the same thing as saying f of x, y. So we can forget about the z. Now um, let's go ahead and take the derivative of this. Let's do that over here, I suppose. So we could say, um, it's almost like saying x squared plus y squared to the one half. And that way we could say one half times x squared plus y squared minus one half times um, a two x. This is for the x version. And then the y would be just kind of the opposite. So we'll have 2x on top divided by the 2 times x squared plus y squared and one half on the bottom. These will just go away. And for the y, we're also going to have x squared plus y squared and then a half on the bottom there. So we'll just go ahead and put that in here. The s equals, we'll go ahead and square that as well, x squared divided by x squared plus y squared. Um, plus y squared divided by x squared plus y squared plus, and then we'll do x squared plus y squared over x squared plus y squared. Like that. We have a dx and a dy, and we're going to notice that everything lines up under one denominator, and we're going to get a 2x squared plus 2y squared on top, x squared plus y squared on the bottom, simplifies to 2 x squared plus y squared over x squared plus y squared. These will cancel, and we're just left with 2 inside the square root. Okay, so that's what we're integrating. Um, it's not that crazy. You know, ds equals, um, and uh, at this point we're actually going to integrate this, but we're going to say the surface area is equal to the integral, we're going to need 2, uh, square root of 2 is going to be there, and then we're going to transform this into the polar coordinates. So we're going to go r, dr, d theta. Let's figure out what the limits of d theta are first. It's just going to be from this side, it's going to be 0 all the way around to this side, so pi. So it's going to be 0 to pi. And then for the radius r limits, um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the cylinder equation, <laughs> and we're going to say x squared, or x equals cosine r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, and then we're going to go ahead and just do r squared cosine theta plus r squared sine theta equals 8 times r sine theta. Then this will be r squared. These things will just go away and become one, right? And then we'll just be, uh, well, here we can, we can kind of say r squared times one, and then that's going to be equal to um, 
eight r sine theta. So you can see the r's will go away here. You're gonna be left with r equals eight sine of theta. So that's gonna be our limits, eight sine of theta. And then we could start to integrate this. So we'll say r squared over two, put in that square root of two so we don't forget about it. <laughs> this is going from zero to eight sine of theta. Um, so that would imply 64 sine squared theta over two, square root of two in there somewhere. And um, like obviously the zero is gonna go away that, uh, and we're just gonna have 32 square root of two sine squared theta. And that's going to be the next integral that we're going from zero to pi in terms of d theta. So we just did the first one there for r's. Um, so here we are. And uh, we're just going to be looking at this sine squared. We pull out the 32 squared to 2, well, zero to pi. And we know that sine squared is equal to let's say um, we we double check our, our little sheets and, and we remember that sine squared equals one minus cosine of two theta all divided by two. So that's what we're gonna plug in here. It's like one half minus one half cosine of two theta and uh, that's d theta. If we were to integrate this, this would just become theta over two minus, um, so become one fourth sine theta. And then we're going from zero to pi. There's 32 squared of two. Um, if we plug pi or zero into the sines, this will just always become zero. So we could just get rid of that. And we'll just end up with our final answer. I think it's gonna be pi over two. There's a 32 squared of two over there. And um, this will just become 16 squared of two pi. Interesting.